for book one, proposition number 24 of Euclid's Elements, if two triangles have the two sides equal to two sides respectively, but have the one of the angles contained by the equal straight lines greater than the other, they will also have the base greater than the base. So if we start with two triangles, triangle ABC and DFE, and we know that the side AB is equal to the side DF, and AC is equal to DE, and also this angle BAC is bigger than the angle FDE. What we're trying to prove is that this base BC is bigger than the base FE. So to start this proof, we want to use book one, proposition number 23, which says that we can essentially construct a duplicate angle from one that we're given. So let's say we want to duplicate this angle BAC, but at the point D and using the line DE. So let's construct that angle and we can label this point here G. And also we want to make it so that DG is equal to the side AB. And we can do that because of book one, proposition number three. So with this construction, we have that BAC, the angle, is equal to the angle GDE. Now we can use postulate number one, which says that we can create a line between any two points. So let's draw lines between G and E and G and F. So we just constructed the line GE the line GF and from here we want to use book one proposition number four which is essentially the side angle side theorem and we want to use this on the triangles BAC and GDE since DG is equal to AB and AC is equal to DE and the angle contained between them GDE and BAC are equal so since they share two sides that are equal and the angle between those sides is equal, we know that the two triangles themselves are completely equal. And this means that the base BC would be equal to the base of this triangle GE. So let's write that, that BC is equal to GE. And if we focus now on this triangle GDF, we can notice that it's an isosceles triangle since it has two equal sides. So due to book one, proposition number five, we know that the base angles, this angle here and this angle here, are equal to each other. So we can write that the angle DGF is equal to the angle DFG. And notice that this angle DFG is smaller than this angle EFG since the whole is always greater than the part. So due to common notion number five, we can write that EFG is bigger than DFG, but DFG is equal to DGF. So we can really write that EFG is bigger than DGF. So angle EFG is bigger an angle DGF. But we also want to notice that this angle DGF is bigger than this angle EGF for the same reason as before due to this common notion number five. And since EFG is bigger than DGF, we know that EFG would be much bigger than EGF. So let's write that, that angle E FG would be much bigger than angle EGF. And to finish this proof, what we want to do is use book one, proposition number 19, which essentially says that the biggest angle in the triangle will subtend the biggest side. So if we focus on this triangle here, EFG, we know that the side GE would be bigger than the side FE because this angle here is bigger than this angle here. So let's write that, that the side EG is bigger 
than the side Fe. But we know, if we go back up, that Eg is equal to the side BC. So really, BC is bigger than Fe, and that is exactly what we were trying to prove. So we can end this with QED.